what's up everybody hey today we're going to be going an awesome video over inflation and dividend kager growths versus also stock price growths over the long term and how they can really play into your potential fire movement financially independent retire early or if you're wanting to retire at a normal time so that being said let's jump right into it so here we go i'm going to show you guys what mine would look like based off my current historical numbers and then we're going to go off of some historical numbers of the s p 500 and kind of end it out with a overall average so starting with a portfolio value of 100 dollars today <clears throat> i plugged in my 2.59 percent starting dividend yield that's average over my current holdings that i hold my three-year weighted dividend compound annual growth has been 9.41 percent taxes so this is another thing we're going to assume that we are putting this into a Roth IRA investment account. So currently, if you are under 50 years old and you're not in that makeup period, that monthly contribution of 6,500 works out to $541 and change. So we're going to put 541 for monthly contribution. Taxes in a Roth account, as you know, as long as you follow the rules, is nothing. You already pay it on the money going in. Inflation, we're going to use a long-term inflation rates of 2%, and then we're also going to change that to a higher inflation rate and see what that does, because I think over the coming decade, we may have higher than normal inflation, and then eventually that may taper off, but that could infect the long-term potential growth. So share price, that doesn't really matter. Annual share price increase, we're going to go with a 5% overall. Uh, and this is just approximate, guys. And so you're going to see we're going to change those numbers as well as time goes on. Now, as you can see here, <clears throat> we're going to use the 20-year, 30-year, and 40-year. So I'm highlighting them here right now. As you guys can see with these cells, see how those all of a sudden now uh, with the DRIP, which is dividend reinvestment, um, or, yeah, di dividend reinvestment uh, plan for shortened terms, uh, essentially that at the 20 year mark with drip and considering the inflation, this is all considered all of those factors that we just talked about. It would be just under $12,000 in annual passive income. And instead of a 2.59% yield, now you'd be generating a 3.99% yield because of the growth. At 30 years, you'd be at just over 42,000. And at 40 years, you would be at just over 155,000 in annual dividend income with your portfolio value of almost 2.5 million dollars all right so these are with my numbers <clears throat> now here's something that i want to do let's go into um, based off of my portfolio what that would look like on the flip side is the amount that i actually want to contribute annually in the next couple years so my monthly cash added i want to get up to five thousand dollars a month and that's just into the dividend growth stocks across the board. Now, obviously, a large majority of that's going to be in the taxable accounts, so taxes may be assumed, but I'm going to do other real estate investments to lower my tax bracket to as close to 7.5%, uh, um, which is the mandatory Social Security slash Medicare on W-2, and then 0% on as many of my investments as I can through depreciation. So... <clears throat> I'm going to just not even put taxes in for that consideration right now. You can see here at that amount uh, putting in, let's just go over a 30-year time period. That would be just under $400,000 in annual dividend income. And that also um, is including the same exact numbers that we had before. So as you can see, that would be a pretty fat fire. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily be a super early retirement. It would be more of an on-time retirement. But you can see how those numbers really play in. So now let's go back to the numbers that we had before and let's change some of the values. So let's say the average starting dividend yield is a 2.59. We can go with a higher yield, slower growth, which is what we'll do. And then we'll go with a lower yield, higher growth and see how that plays. And we'll play into the inflation as well. All right. So. On my portfolio, I did not also include, let's go with what, if we had a 4% inflation over the long period. You could see how that would eat away. By year 40, we are at literally under 48,000 versus at the 2% long-term historical rate, 
we're at 155,000. So that literally cuts your money by a third, more than a third actually. So you see how inflation can really affect a portfolio of investments long term. <clears throat> All right, so let's go with you want to do a higher starting yield of let's say 4%. So 4%, so you have some lower ones and you have some higher ones like say Altria and you manage to get a 4%. Actually, some people would classify a higher yield portfolio 5% or more, so we'll go with five. And then on that dividend kegger, let's say uh, you're going to be somewhere probably around the maybe three to 4% range. So maybe in growth, three to four. So we could say three or four, we'll go with four for this purpose. And then inflation, we'll consider the same. Annual share price appreciation, um, we can keep that the same and that's fine. So that way this stays as comparable as possible. So as you guys can see, there's a huge, huge, huge difference in uh, portfolio growth here with a higher starting yield and a lower CAGR. Now, let's take, for example, some of these, right? We're at under $25,000 by year 40 in passive income and your portfolio is only one, just over 1.5 million versus the 2.5 when I did mine. So you see how having a starter dividend yield of 5% with a lower CAGR, which would be typical with a higher starting yield, is not necessarily advantageous, guys. And if we put inflation at 4%, it shrinks that number so much more. <clears throat> so let's now factor instead, being smart about it, let's start with a low starting yield Okay, 2%, so we'll buy some higher yields, but we'll focus primarily on lower starting yields, such as uh, Visa, MasterCard, those are less than a percent starting yield, but then we'll also throw in some Altria, BTI, and stuff like that that is over you know, six, seven, eight percent And we're gonna average out this portfolio for starting yield 2%, and we're gonna throw in a dividend kegger of, let's say, 12%, okay? Which 12% is very aggressive but let's say we're able to maintain a 12%. So that being said, taxes, everything's gonna be the same. We're gonna put inflation back to 2%, keep annual share price at 5%, because that is kind of a moderate lower ball number, middle of the road anyways. Uh, not super aggressive, but not too conservative. So you can see how that puts our annual passive income by year 40 at over 500,000 with a portfolio value of over 4.2 million. So you can see why having a smaller starting yield, but a high dividend kegger is actually advantageous of yourself. And even if we put in a 4% inflation value by year 40, you're still yielding with that inflation. And that's assuming inflation's like that this whole time, almost $130,000 in dividends with over a $2.15 million portfolio value at 40, year 40. <clears throat> so you can see how it's hugely advantageous to be able to do uh, a lower starting yield stock portfolio with a high dividend kegger instead, such as the Visa, the MasterCards, uh, even some Microsoft, different companies that have a tendency and a history of growing a higher kegger, higher compound growth, but maybe a lower starting yield. And you can get some that are the best of both worlds, by the way. So for example, Texas Instruments is, has a you know higher than normal technology starting dividend yield. Um, so let's say two to 3%, but their dividend CAGR has been even higher than this 12% over the long period. Now, is it gonna stay that same? Probably not but it just gives you guys an idea to the infinity of options that there are out there. So <clears throat> now we've covered my portfolio. We've covered uh, the monthly cash contributions. These are all been the same. So assuming that $6,500 investment, that doesn't include the last 10 years of makeup period as well, guys. But how much would you need to invest? So let's say, Inflation makes it back to 2%, okay? And let's say you have a lower starting yield, higher dividend CAGR, annual share price, we're gonna keep that the same. Now, let's say you wanted to retire uh, in, um, let's say, however old you are, let's say you wanna retire in 25 years, okay? We're gonna go in between 20 and 30 years and call it 25 years, all right? 
So, how much would you need to be able to have, you know, fifty thousand dollars or more? How much would you have to contribute? Okay. Now, obviously, the tax situation is going to come into play because you're not going to be putting all that into a tax-free account. So that is something to also take a look at, guys. All right. So that being said, let's take a look at some of those numbers. All right, guys. So as you can see here, keeping the same numbers, monthly cash added to the portfolio, $830. Obviously, this doesn't consider taxes. So you can pay taxes out of the excess of your cash flow bucket besides the 830 remembering that 541 of that could be completely tax-free all right so that being said if you put in a tax-free account and then the rest of it you can just pay in your excess cash besides the money you put into your account all right so annual passive income of fifty thousand dollars at 25 years you would be putting in eight hundred and thirty dollars monthly into your portfolio assuming all of these original starting values saying that you start with an overall average 2% starting yield with a 12% CAGR, which 12% is pretty aggressive, guys. So that's what I would say. It's more aggressive, but uh, is it unheard of? Absolutely not. Take a look at Peter Lynch. Take a look at uh, Warren Buffett and the returns they got over decades. Is it possible? Certainly. All right, so now let's take a look um, at how much you would have to put in if you wanted to do, let's say, a uh, middle of the road uh, and you wanted to assume more average values. Okay, now as you guys can see on the screen, these values are much different. So everything is assumed the same. Inflation, taxes, etc. The only differences are is your starting dividend yield is going to be around 3%, which is not abnormally high by any means. Um, and your compound annual growth rate is going to be more normalized at about 7%. Okay, and then we're going to figure out how much do you have to contribute. Well, we see here to be able to get the $50,000 required at 25 years, you would be contributing monthly $2,000. So that is a large, much larger amount than the $830 uh, you know, to $50 a month versus the other numbers. So, that being said, you see how you can play around with these numbers quite a bit. But essentially, if you're wanting to do about 25 years out, whether you want to be slightly more more conservative in your investment approach or your long-term goals, or if you want to be more aggressive, you see you're going to need to be contributing somewhere in that $850 to $2,000 mark uh, of monthly added value to your portfolio, guys. So to give you an idea of how much that is, if you did the $850, okay, every single month, that'd be $10,200 a year that you'd be doing. And then if you wanted to do the 2000, well, obviously that's $24,000 a year. So quite the variance between the two, but it is it impossible? Absolutely not. And also I must say this, there are obviously outliers guys. So there's people that have been able to get a decently starting dividend yield, let's say at 2.5%, but they've been able to get an insane kegger, okay? So like to give you an idea on the portfolio of mine, it is actually about like a, it's like a mid twos for starting yield with my kegger of about a 13, 13.4 actually. So if we go 13.4, and this is a possibility guys, and keeping everything else the same and we do a contribution of 850 only back to the start you see how at year 25 you would be well above the 50,000 at $120,000 okay uh, just by doing 850 a month and if you did just the amount of the Roth IRA contribution which is 100% tax free you'd be at almost 77,000 with those higher numbers uh, so is it impossible? Absolutely not, guys. Some people will comment down below, possibly, and say, oh, well, this is not possible. Well, that is not the case. Look back in history. Look at famous investors. It is possible. Um, but like I said, go with closer to an average and also assume that you're going to get a lesser return than a greater. And if you end up getting a greater return over a long period with the recessions and everything, and you're smart about reinvesting everything and not using your portfolio to pay taxes, instead paying that out of pocket, uh, you can really grow a sizable portfolio, even with inflation assumed, and even with, um, uh, you know, recessions and everything else assumed, guys, you can really bump those numbers quite a bit. 
and uh, yeah, and and so even if we were at a higher inflation with this higher portfolio target at 4% inflation long term, you'd see if you did the 850 back to the other low amount, you'd still be over 61,000. So you'd be beating your 50,000 a year in passive income and growing. So that is all for today, guys. I know that was a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different uh, price targets and growth scenarios. So leave me a comment down below if you guys want to see something similar or different or something specific for your um, your situation. Uh, now, obviously, these videos are not tailored to people's specific individual um, target. This is more for just general information and just for entertainment. Uh, but like I said, obviously, the reality of it is is somewhere in between all of these is a reality for a uh, possibility. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys got something out of it. You saw the difference between a high starting yield and lower kegger, which is typical with a higher starting yield and how that can be very detrimental for long-term growth versus a lower starting yield with a higher uh, growth on your dividend kegger and how that can really benefit. And we didn't even get into the share price changes, but uh, that also impacts things. So Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, stay tuned, and see you guys next time.